So welcome to another unboxing video from theplayers8.com. My name's Alexander. Today we're taking a look at Verdun 1916 Steel Inferno from Fellowship of Simulations. So this is a two-player World War II game that obviously covers the Battle of Verdun. Did I say World War II? World War I? Two-player World War I? Yeah. Okay. The numbers in my brain don't work today. Um, so this is uh, a, 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 a... It's an older game. It's been out for a couple of years. Um, but uh, I just got a copy of it. That's not true. I got a copy of it probably about a year, year and a half ago. It's just been on the shelf. But uh, looking forward to opening this. Uh, there's, you know, a lot of recommendations considered to be very, very good. Um, and, you know, a bit of a different style of war game as well. And it has this beautiful illustrations and artwork on it by a, a gentleman by the name of Tardy. Hopefully that's how it's pronounced. And it might not be. Um, but uh, this has got a two-player. You, I don't know. Maybe you could solo this. But there's a lot of card play, so I'm not sure. Because uh, this is like a, a, it's a CDG, you use your cards for either ops values or they might have an event or a barrage on them, and it's a choice between the two. Um, but it's this big area map, and um, we'll take a look at all this uh, and crack it open. But Fellowship of Simulations is a French company, um, so I believe uh, the rules are a translation. I don't think we have the French versions in here or anything, nope. But uh, we've played uh, Wars of Religion by them, and I think they also did um, Napoleon's Conquests, which is brand new, which Grant also has. I believe there's an unboxing for the, that game on the channel already. If there's not already, it's coming very soon. Um, so uh, th there's a lot to look forward to here, but uh, Fellowship of Simulations, the rule book itself, uh, is has a large number of pages, but as you can see, there's not a lot of text on all the pages, so it's not actually a very long rule book, even though page-wise it might look like that it is. Um, but uh, that, that's that's the rule book, and this is one of those little square boxes, so it's not uh, like a GMT or a compass or an MMP in that way. And a lot of the rest of this stuff is we're just kind of hardcore into the components already. Uh, we have two different event tables, uh, and we have uh, U.S. entry into the Great War as well. It's a little track for that, but uh, so we can probably do this and have both these two played. So just set those up on the map under a plexi or anything, something like that, if you wanted to. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the game does also come with a playbook uh, again. The art style in this is really uh, evocative. It's very stylized. I really like it. Um, it just feels like it's something very different. And I like that a game has an art direction and sticks with it um, as it goes on. And uh, it's just, I don't know. It's nice to see that extra level of care taken in that aspect of a game as well. Doesn't get, War games don't have to be functional. Also, pictorial game setup, this is a 10 out of 10 for me. That's obviously much easier to do in a game like this, where it's areas and blocks versus hexes and counters with stacks of units, but if a game can reasonably have this, I, I love it when it does. It makes a huge, huge difference to um, like just instantly getting into the game, basically. Uh, so the game does come with a bag of D6s, or 10 of them, uh, and they are all different colors. Uh, I believe the colors absolutely 100% do not matter, um, they just gave you one of each color just for funsies. Um, but I think at some point I'm probably going to replace these with like gray or black ones for the Germans and then blue ones for the French's. So I'll end up with more dice because you can roll up to 10. I, I swear I saw 12, but you, you roll close to like 10 dice for some of the larger barrages. And so a bag of dice. Um, and then we have our kind of wooden playing pieces. There's three bags of these. Uh, the little ones are these large cylinders. I believe these are for marking victory points on tracks and things like that. Um, there's only a couple of those in, uh, in events. But then we have these two big old bags of wooden pieces. The black ones represent the German units and also the German trenches. So we have these large wooden pieces and they stand up when they're like ready to attack, when they're ready. They lie down when they're exhausted. 
Uh, and then there's these much thinner, smaller guys. These represent trenches. And a trench goes in one area, and you can only have one in each area for each side. So you're going to have, you know, a couple guys and a trench. And then the next area you might have a trench and a guy, or he's exhausted, right? So there's lots of those uh, wooden pieces, and there's a massive bag of them. Uh, and you're also limited by what's here. So if for some reason you came up against a limit of these, you cannot get more. Uh, the French blocks are identical in what they contain and what they are. I'm just going to show you nice blue. So the little ones are the trenches, the large ones are the combat units, again exhausted or standing up, they're ready to go. Um, but another big bag of those. So we then have a small baggie with kind of a, a, a little counter sheet in it, uh, and also some loose counters that were not on a sprue. Uh, this does not have an easy open, so we're just going to open it up. And we're going to pour these out. We'll have to get a bag for these. I'll probably just, maybe I might stick them in this little bag. But uh, we have these large counters for the US DRMs, uh, and I think this is for those, um, this track here for entry into the war, I believe. And you might get DRMs with those guys showing up. Um, we have a first month marker and a second month marker, because each turn is, uh, is two months, apart from the first turn. Um, it is horrendously misprinted, though. So just, you know, that's not my favorite thing in the whole world. And these are also misaligned. Luckily, the, uh, the control markers aren't as bad as that, um, although they're slightly off center. So these are French control markers. And then on the back side, they're German control markers. Just put those in areas that you control, nice and simple. Uh, but that's all the counters. Those punch pretty easily. Won't have any struggles with those, but uh, We'll be putting those in a baggie because the bag that they came in is not, not isn't resealable. So we just got to figure out a way to do that. Um, we'll do the cards here in just a second. Let's get the map out. So the nice thing with this game is that the map is mounted. Uh, let's open it up. Be reasonable about it. And this is kind of a long, thin map. It's not a 22 by 34 that we're kind of used to. If I can open it. All right. Also, I don't know if you can tell, I opened that for the first time and it immediately lays flat. You don't have like the bend and warp that you have on uh, from certain other publishers <laughs> with their brand new boards that you have to kind of like flatten out. Uh, so I appreciate that they have the precise measurements down. Uh, but this is this is the map. Like we said, the map's divided up into areas. Uh, and this one, uh, the Muse, is uh, also a dividing line. So these are two different areas divided by the river. Uh, and it, what was interesting reading the rules is that they say um, the uh, the red rectangle, which is a f which represents a fort, that has a value, and the white triangle that represents elevation, or elevation and a fort in this space. That's the only things that actually matter. Um, it's everything else in this, oh well, and the victory point values. These, uh, if you can control that, you're gonna get a victory point, I, I believe. But everything else, all, like all of the names, all of the actual drawings, almost all of it is like just for like historical flavor and, and geographical reasons. Like it's, it has no game effect. And so that was that was interesting. They went to all this effort for this beautiful board, and it is just for the aesthetics, which I really, really, once again, I appreciate that. It's nice. Um, we have a couple boxes and tracks over here. So we have our turn track, our air superiority um, pendulum, uh, and then you have uh, your holding box for trenches, uh, and then uh, you have your en route troops as they come into your reserve, that then they come onto the board, is my understanding of that. Uh, and then we have our victory point track over here as well, and I think 50 points to the Germans, they win, uh, and then negative 15, I think they lose, auto 
but, you know, if it got to that point, the game's over anyway. Uh, and we have a, uh, a morale track for our frontline troops, and then the number of rounds that we're going to play as well. So you play seven rounds in a turn, and a turn is also two months. So we had that little month marker. February, oh, the first turn is only one month, but every other one you have the first month, you're going to play seven rounds, like seven cards each. Then you're going to flip this over and do second month, and you're going to do another seven rounds. You're going to do that total of six turns total. Um, but that's the, that's the map. Let's have a look at the cards, because the cards are stunning in this game. Uh, they're also um, a larger size. I think we're all used to um, US-sized cards. Uh, and I, I don't know my card sizes, but these are larger than like your GMT standard US cards. Uh, but I don't think these are tarot sized. They might be, but I think these are not big enough to be tarot sized either. They're somewhere in between. If you know your card sizes, please let me know. So these are the Frenches. Um, and again, they have that wonderful artwork on them that you've seen pictures of this kind of thing, but they've, they, they've drawn it basically. So these are barrages, and they t there's little numbers down here. So the red number tells you the turn on which this particular barrage can be played. It can only be played on turn six. Whereas this one can be played on turn four, five, or six. Or five or six. Or three, four, five, or six. Uh, they also have a barrage value. This is an eight value barrage. This is a ten value barrage. That's how many dice you're going to chuck. Or, failing all that, you could play it as four ops. Um, so that's, and there's a lot of barrages, right, as you might expect. You're going to do barrages, and then you're going to follow those up with infantry assaults on the board. So you get really bad barrages early in the game, uh, but we figure out our technology and our artillery doctrine as it goes on. Or you have the horizontal, or no, the, uh, the vertically oriented, the portrait um, events. So these ones, you have the ops that you could use, or you have events that you can play instead. Um, and some, some events uh, will stay out uh, uh, as like permanent bonuses. Some of them might say, hey, this combos with this other card if you have that out. Um, I do think it's interesting that they mixed this wonderful illustration with also historical pictures. That's, uh, and I like that it's full card art. That I know that's... Uh, we're getting into Magic the Gathering of Pokemon here, but I really like that style <laughs> where you have like the whole card and there's not just a bunch of dead void space. Um, I really appreciate that. But yeah, uh, these cards have great illustrations on them or nice historical pictures and you're not going to get bored looking at these, that's for sure. But that's the French cards. Again, there's a l like, I don't know, maybe one third barrages and two thirds events just loosely. And let's have a quick look at the German ones. So the German ones, again, barrages, uh, but they, they're they different, right? They have different artwork on them. Some of it's very evocative, um, very horrific at times, but you get the different styles of uh, artillery that were being used. So those are, that's all barrages. Gas attacks. Battle of Jutland. I wonder if that's a diversion of resources. Air support, yeah, you can move your air superiority on the track, right? Submarine warfare. But yeah, um, uh, oh, there for. Oh, some of these have no events, that's interesting. But yeah, that's, uh, there's a lot of those, oh, the Red Baron. But uh, that's all the cards. Are those the same size decks? Mm, the, they might, they, I think they are. But yeah, that's everything that's in the game. Uh, I am very excited to play this. And so far, Grant has agreed to do a little micro compared to last time, Guns of August events. So I think we're actually gonna play this this year, as well as a couple others, and we'll do a little event um, here in August, which is when I'm recording this. Who knows when you're watching it, though. Uh, so hopefully there's a review for this coming out at some point soon as well. 
uh, and you can kind of get our thoughts for it, but it does come to us from others very highly regarded, uh, and it looks great, so I, I do have high hopes for this. I don't want to get too far ahead on the hype train, Just I don't want it to be a letdown, but uh, a lot of people that we've spoken to really, really, really like it. Um, getting a hold of this might be something of a challenge, because you've got to get it from France, uh, but it's worth checking out on, like, uh, international distributors or somewhere like Noble Knight, you can always put out a flag for that and they'll email you if they get one in kind of a thing. But that is a look at Verdun 1916 Steel Inferno from Fellowship of Simulations. Hopefully uh, we'll get this to the table here real soon and let you know how this is, but appreciate you very much for tuning in. I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com.